good evening friends so how have you been i am needam sixena from pune india and you are all welcome to this eighth international poetry meet on the page it's my pleasure to have poets of repute such as anita nahal sham sundar sharma pankuri sinha and dr dr maitri with us today for the poetry lovers the poetry is either like that balm that calms your soul and makes you dance in glee or it is that mirror that brings out the harsh reality of life or it is something cathartic making you heal in short poetry always has something for everyone let me begin the session by inviting the poets of the day into the studio to begin with let me invite pankhuri hi pankhuri hi. Hi, hi. Big namaste, big hello to all friends. Namaste. So, Pankhuri Sinha is a bilingual young poetess and story writer from India. She has two books of poems in English, two collections of stories in Hindi, and five collections of poetry in Hindi to her credit. She has won several prestigious national and international awards, such as the Best Correspondence Prize for her short story in the first Chicago. In- literature festival in yalta creamia 2019 she has received awards from countries such as albania romania nigeria tunisia among other countries and won the special jury award in the premio basio international poetry contest in italy in january 2021 most recently she won the gelitio prize for poetry in mother tongue in italy saito excellence in literature award in uh, bangladesh and third prize for a poetry shikov in my heart in the shikov literary festival yalta creamia so welcome pankhuri Thank hope you. you are liking to be in the show amazing it's so nice to be here with you always a pleasure thank you actually thank we are doing a show together for the first time thank you thank you so much and now let me invite dr maitri hello dr maitri Hello Neelam hello Pankuri hello doctor friends doctor Mehti Joshi is an ophthalmologist and a psychologist by profession and an enthusiastic writer she has two books of poetry published by the name of shells and melodies and insight pinhole a bit clearer is her first novel Her short stories and poems <clears throat> have been published in a number of national and international journals and anthologies. She practices ophthalmology and psychology in her clinic IKX Center and Insight and stays in Pune since the past 20 years. So welcome once again Pankhuri. Thank you. Uh sorry Mathuri. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you Neelam. And now let me invite Sham Sundar Sharma ji I have met Sham Sundar Sharma ji I think uh, 10 or 12 years ago for the first time and we have been meeting often So good let evening, me know good, uh, good evening good evening Good evening Pankuri ji good evening Dr Maitri Hello Sham ji Lieutenant Colonel Sham Sundar Sharma Shaurya Chakra is a decorated and war wounded veteran He holds a bachelor's of arts honors and a master's degree in English. He is an avid poet, keen bird watcher and a nature lover. He was a guest poet at Formoy International Poetry Festival in Ireland in August 2013 and the event coordinator of the Delhi Poetry Festival 2014. He runs a vibrant poetry group Poets Artists Unplugged which has published four international anthologies. His poems have been published in numerous anthologies, magazines, and e-zines in India and abroad. His first poetry compilation, titled "Adrift," was released two years ago. So, welcome once again, Sham Ji. Thank you, Nilam Ji. Good to see you again. And now, let me have the pleasure of inviting Anita Nahal. Anita Nahal, PhD, CDP, is an Indian-American poet. flash fictionist children's writer and columnist anita has two books of poetry one of flash fiction four for children and three edited anthologies to her credit her poems and flash fictions are found in journals 
in the US, UK, Asia, and Australia. She's also a columnist with Aduna, a New York based journal. Anita has received many awards, including the Fulbright Scholar in Residence, the National Endowment for the Humanities, the AAUW Leadership Award, and the Howard University Multicultural Affairs Leadership Award, among others. Two of Anita's books are prescribed in a course on multiculturalism and immigration at the University of the Utrecht, the Netherlands. Anita is the daughter of Saitya Academy Award winning Indian novelist Chaman Nahal and educationist Sudarshna Nahal. So, welcome, Anita. Wow. Welcome Thank you so again. much for that wonderful introduction. I'm very happy to be here with everyone, Pankuri, Maitri, Sham, and yourself. And it's a pleasure to be part of your event. Thank you so much. Okay. So thank you, friends. So, okay, so now I I'll oh, introduce, sorry. Now sorry, I'll sorry. introduce yeah. Neelam, who is the energy and thought and soul behind all of our poetic journeys uh, on her page. Uh, so, Neelam Chandra Saxena has authored five novels, one novella, and eight short story collections, 32 poetry collections, and 14 children's books. She is a bilingual author, writing in English as well as Hindi. More than 1,500 of her poems and short stories have been published in various journals, anthologies, and magazines. She holds a record with the Limca Book of Records 2015 for being the author having the highest number of publications in a year in English and Hindi. She has won several international and national awards. She was listed in Forbes as one of the most popular 78 authors in 2014. When she's not working or writing, she loves a game of table tennis, anchoring, acting, walking, etc. besides large doses of laughter. So that's Neelam. <laughs> thank you, Maitri. Thank you, Maitri. And thank you, friends, for joining us in this wonderful event. Your presence has made it all the more wonderful. Let me begin with a four-liner written by me. A circle of hugs, a give and take of love and affection, to keep it passing on and on, and on the earth a divine heaven shall be spun. Friends, poetry has the power to unite the world through, the, uh, through love and affection that flows through it. Poetry also reflects the realities of the society and is a lens through which one can peep in and make it a better place to live in. I request Pankuri Sinha to kindly render her first poem for the day. Pankuri Sinha. Thank you so much, Neelam ji. The title of the first poem is Those Who Crept Inside or Dogs. Partially political. Right? Those who crept inside or dogs, not necessarily. Creeper like creatures. Creepers that came close, wrapped around, encircled, and bloomed in fragrant bunches of color, in those very ornate things called flowers. Some were complete parasites, far away from anything so organic as a blooming flower, or the entire structure of flowers blooming, the land, the soil, the roots, the creeper, and whatever it was, was it a tree-like dog? Was it a bush-like dog? Was it a total mess? Was it a total forest made up of a conversation? What bloomed, what perished, which colors spoke loudly, which colors had a fragrance? What persisted, what persevered, what was so fleeting, momentary? What everlasting about momentary sparkles. What made a promise to last forever before being swallowed by the death. That was a very, very beautiful and heart-touching poem. Thank you so much, Pankhuri. Can Nobody I ask you a question? Answer. Yeah, please, please, you are uh, welcome to give your reaction. Lovely, lovely poem, Pankhuri. Enjoyed it a lot. Beautiful. Thank you so much. I said it's partially political, but it could also be about love. So, yeah. 
Right. So, Pankhuri, can I ask you a question? Yes. Uh, it is said that poetry or in fact any form of literature is like a lens. So how do you view this lens as? Whether it is really realistic or it is just an imaginary lens? Well, it is both, you know, it is to an extent realistic. To an extent it is imaginary. I am like you, both a poet and a story writer. Uh, of course, I'm yet to write my first novel, but uh, my poems are very realistic. They're also very critical uh, in, in things that I think deserve to be, you know, critiqued um, by uh, lack of development, like, you know, political apathy, like uh, social evils, like in the war, uh, stuff like that. So I am more of a realistic writer rather than just writing uh, you know, uh, things that paint a very rosy picture of life. Uh, I don't just write love poems, you know, I, I talk about uh, deeper things, you know. So, uh, yeah, I think that is true. To an extent, imagination is extremely required, you know, to get an imagery in a poem or to get your language flowing or to write a story, right? I mean, you need the imagination, even if that you know that this is a theme on which I'm going to write. You need imagination to, you know, take it forward. So I think that's very, very important. So I think it's a blend thank, of the two. Thank you, dear Pankuri, for the beautiful answer. So moving on, a few lines. A dot I am in a world of infinite lines, and yet my existence meaningful. For free, I am to follow the directions as per wish is mine. Let's hear this interesting poem titled Meaning from Dr. Maitri. Dr. Maitri. Okay, uh, this is about uh, whenever I go uh, on the road in India, sometimes I, I don't uh, see things which I want to welcome. Uh, so this poem is about that. So the poem is Meaning. Walking through the main street, during the prime of the traffic hours, I met with heaps of garbage collected as a reaction to the corporation's changed rules. Walking through the main street, during the prime of the traffic hours, I met with heaps of garbage collected as a reaction to the corporation's changed rules. I met with buses buzzing past, expiring, obnoxious, ugly smog. I met with the concrete, sand and rubble piled on the side of the road for the construction of an overbridge is underway. I met with buses buzzing past, expiring, obnoxious, ugly smog. I met with the concrete, sand and rubble piled on the side of the road for the construction and overbridge is underway. On my way through the main street, I met a toddler with hair turned golden brown, a swollen belly, face, hands and feet smeared with dust, discharging green from the nose and yet trying to play with her older sibling running around in rags. On my way through the main street, I met a toddler with hair turned golden brown, a swollen belly, face, hands and feet, smeared with dust, discharging green from the nose and yet trying to play with her older siblings running around in rags. And at the end of the road, out of the blue, I met a heron, perched atop a tree like a king and urging me to see, amidst the vagaries, life still has meaning in spite of it all. And at the end of the road, out of the blue, I met a heron perched atop a tree like a king and urging me to see amidst the vagaries, life still has meaning in spite of it all. Thank you. That was wonderful, Maitri. A very lovely Thank you. poem. Thank you. A very Thank lovely you. poem. Can yeah, I ask I'm, you a question? Can yeah. I just... Uh, no. yeah, I, I yeah, you were saying poem. something. No, please, yeah, Anita. Thank you. Thank you. Your poem also. It is really, really, uh, you know, thought-provoking. And my, you so your poem, it's, it's the combination, the talking about what's on the streets and talking about garbage and the toddler. And in the end of it, that hope is still there that in spite of it all. And I really like that because the title of my second book was Hey, Spilt Milk is Spilt. So despite okay. everything that happens in life, we have to see the positives. So I really appreciated your poem. Thank you so very, much, Anita. Thank very you. visual and very moving poem. Thank you. Thank you, Shamji. 
you know typically when we were children we used to think doctors are those creatures who have spectacles and who are only bothered about uh, uh, their patients and the medicines but you seem to be a nature lover uh, since yes. when did you develop this fascination i developed it since childhood because uh, my father was in a bank and we used to every uh, summer vacation he used to take us uh, somewhere uh, out of the city and so since that time i started slowly developing that love for nature and it went on growing and then i met my husband he is also very fond of uh, moving about and going out of uh, the city uh, traveling totally actually and so with that it continued uh, so in that way my nature love developed and it is still continuing continuing so, so do let me join you when you are going out next time sure we are in the same city, city. <laughs> yeah actually and these two years have been really like very difficult uh, for us because we have not been able to go anywhere and so, so true it was difficult they were difficult but we'll find a way out so Certainly. moving ahead <laughs> so moving ahead what's that that doesn't let me rest what's that that brings out my best let's hear sham sundar sharma whom i would rather call driftwood who talks about the child in him sham sundar sharma I had lost connection in between. Now we can hear you and see you. So please uh, render your first poem. Okay, sorry, I lost connection in between. Long after we grow up, there stays a child in most of us, a child that believes in magic. defying all logic deep inside we hope for a magic wand to ease our miseries and those of our loved ones we fail miserably suddenly we feel old and useless grudgingly we accept there is no magic there are no masihas either loss of hope a paralysis of sort engulfs us we must shake up ourselves forget about magic just be there for ourselves and our loved ones always chin up sham sham that is the real magic yeah what you that's the real magic is the real magic <laughs> finding happiness in everyday life particularly the love and health of our loved ones and ourselves wonderful poem uh, perhaps Thank we can you. talk online i would love for you to send it in an edited volume that i'm bringing out on magic poems so we talk to <laughs> so that's a wonderful offer uh, driftwood so uh, mm -hmm. now for your question let me ask you how did you come across this name driftwood ashore it's such an interesting uh, uh, name that you chose for yourself Uh, this is something like uh, uh, during my army tenure, I was posted on the China border, and um, we had this uh, river called uh, the Wangchu, which flows from China into India, and later forms part of Brahmaputra. So we used to get a lot of driftwood, and um, okay. and uh, I sort of collected driftwood as a hobby. apart from seeing birds and other things wow and, wow. Uh, wow and uh, i was very fascinated that this is not just ornamental you know this particular piece of wood has got so many stories to tell um it has come from somewhere else it has been through a long voyage it has seen so many it has seen life it has been seasoned wood and now it is perhaps just ornament and then i when i started writing again after my army tenure uh, i had a long pause then i started writing again one of my first poems was uh, titled driftwood a personification of driftwood 
so that is the name i decided to stick by for a long time very interesting you know i've been uh, thinking of asking you this question since 12 years since the time we first met so today it's i got the chance to ask you <laughs> it's really it, it's good fun you know like um, uh, writing on uh, what we perceive as uh, inanimate objects like i have poem on uh, poem on nail or a, po a poem on uh, feather something like that and there is lot more to what we perceive you know very well said so very moving well said. ahead moving ahead friends uh, why do you think sita walked through fire to prove her loyalty to her husband or do you think she walked through it to harden herself for things which were to appear suddenly did she know what future had in store for her let's listen to anita as she renders her first poem fire couldn't stop laughing anita hi everyone so this poem is from my uh, third volume which is going to be published in august called what's wrong with us kali women that's the name of the um, book that's going to come out so this poem is called fire couldn't stop laughing she stood at the edge of a morning and quizzing fire with wings spans huge like wandering albatrosses flapping relentlessly is bruise and eyes piercing and staring its body almost hardened like steel what are you waiting for come on now child this is not the first and it might not be the last you know better i will walk through you i said i have no calms no fears but will i come out without feelings this time fire couldn't stop laughing have you forgotten sita isn't this a different period different story i asked i'm choosing to be loved again you think sita didn't want the same from the corner of my eyes i saw sita gesturing to be silent i saw draupadi signaling to do what i wished i saw durga and kali always to assist in fighting any new wretched monsters of course fire couldn't stop laughing thank you beautiful beautiful what very, powerful. Very, powerful. very powerful what an imagery yeah very powerful and with beautiful images thank so anita you, a question for you when was the first time you read regarding indian scriptures oh i think it's been a long journey long time since my childhood and our parents used to you know not just uh, they didn't just introduce us to the scriptures but they used to talk about it a lot so we have you know grown up with ramayana mahabharata and stories of krishna or stories uh, different stories of hanuman so i think it's been a long journey and as i grew up and you know saw life around me i went back into the scriptures kept you know reading again and again and and i like to fall back on scriptures because most of my poetry is against uh, injustices in life so whether it's racism or caste system or you know gender or ages of anything that is any isms so yeah. that's what compels me to fall back on scriptures because scriptures teach us a lot we just have to you know read them thoroughly if not thoroughly in the sense of each and every word but try to find the meaning that they are trying to tell us and that's that's what you know holds my passion so yeah very beautiful and the thought very beautiful so over to maitri so uh, uh, now i invite neelam to render her first poem uh, her first poem is the madhumati unveiled uh, it's a beautiful poem with respect to plants and creepers always give us but they also have some thoughts and we need to just stand and listen to them so madhu the madhumati unveiled by neelam thank you so much dr maitri it is actually madhumalti because there's a madhumalti creep yeah there's a madhumalti creeper right in front of my gate uh, as i come out of the main gate and i enter my garden okay, so okay, it's titled no no problem so yeah. how would you know i haven't invited you home 
So, <laughs> so the unveiled Madhumalti. Despite the calmness of the orange morning, I felt some restlessness in the air. Who was it? What made it so uneasy? When the sighs became louder, I rushed into my garden to find the creeper of Madhumalti swaying to and fro, though everything else was so quiet. Gently touching the Madhumalti, I asked, What's it that hurts you so much? She looked at me disdainfully and said, This is the time when I prefer to be left alone. My emotions are raw after a good sleep at night and soon my existence is going to be rampaged. Let me remove all the nervousness before that. Why? I asked. The sun will rise soon and give you some warmth. She replied, yes, but the day shall attract the butterflies to snatch away my pollens. The insects may bite my flowers and the worst of all, you human beings. You will pluck even the beautiful flowers, though smilingly bloom upon me. With complete empathy, I hugged her tight, but she struggled to get free. When I went into the garden once again in the evening, I found her as silent as the stones lying nearby. I tried to speak, but she refused to be drawn into any conversation. I noticed that the flowers that were jovially dancing with the beauty of the morning had indeed been plucked. Madhumalti was bare. Madhumalti was bare. Thank you so much. Yes. Very powerful. Very powerful. Mm. Yeah. And a lot of questioning. And that's that. That's what gets my mind going. Uh, we we just, actually never uh, question the giver, like what the giver wants. We just want to take. I think that is a good reminder for us to ask the those who give us what is their thought. Like it's very nice. Correct. Very. And I think COVID nineteen should have made many of us, at least hopefully a lot of us, think about these things. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, but unfortunately, although some of, you know, there are certain uh, people I've seen who started contributing so much to the society, but there are others who become meaner. So it all depends upon the state of mind one is in. And I suppose poetry plays a very important role in bringing out these feelings. Mm -hmm. So that's my thought. I could be wrong, of course. <laughs> so moving ahead. Uh, let's move on to the second round of poetry. But yeah. what about the question for you? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I I am going to ask one question to Neelam. Uh, yes, uh, Neelam, I want to ask that uh, you are actually very busy. Uh, you work in the railways. You are in the office, and then uh, you are so busy on the page, uh, conducting so many uh, events. So I want to ask, how disciplined are you about your writing? Like, do you have a specific time for your writing uh, or uh, like whenever something comes to you, just take the pen and paper or the mobile and then you type it whenever it just uh, comes into your mind? How do you go see, about it? See, like all artists, I am a very moody person. I don't have a set uh, time for writing. And as such, uh, there I can see a few people from railway family, they know how indisciplined our life can be. So it is a 24 by 7 job. I can be called at midnight. I can be called at 3 a.m. in the morning to go to the site or wherever uh, there's need. So I can't have a disciplined life like that. But uh, thoughts keep pouring in, you know, and uh, like sometimes those thoughts may be there since two days, three days, four days. And finally, I just take four or five minutes to jot down a poem. That's my right. routine, you can say. <laughs> Very nice. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Neelam, for this lovely answer. Yeah, you have so many novels, you know. So my question is, I mean, how do you find the time? First of all, and you're... I mean, I, I have to say that you're an immensely talented writer. That was a very powerful poem. Very powerful poems by everyone. 
but uh, please do uh, you know quickly also say that how do you find the time for all these best selling novels congratulations on the latest one as well thank you so much you know uh, like if a river wants to flow it will find a path so the thoughts inside me are like those uh, uh, rivers or springs that want to flow so they do find their way and i don't watch television that is uh, one of the biggest secret i haven't watched television since last 22 years i suppose uh, <laughs> so i do get some time and uh, that time i utilize either for my hobbies which maitri mentioned during the starting of the session or for writing that's it wonderful i have joined your league uh, i don't <laughs> okay that's so nice to hear because a journalist not watching television is something different but that's how you can find time yeah. <laughs> so let's move on to a second round of poetry uh i'll just uh, render a few lines she kept on building walls after walls ensuring that no one enters her heart when the sunlight of love fell upon her gently fell down all her wall art Let's listen to Maitri as she reads out her poem, Spaces and Boundaries. Maitri Joshi. Yeah, thank, thank Neelam. Actually, this poem is about a paradox where people want to reveal things about themselves as well as they create boundaries around them. So it's the poem that explores this sentiment. Uh, spaces and boundaries. There are fences that protect your walls and the walls that make up your home. The windows that let you view. only as much as you want to see there are fences that protect your walls and the walls that make up your home the windows that let you view only as much as you want to see the door that displays your name and is open to only a chosen few a door that leads to your backyard sometimes it hides all that is not to show the door that displays your name and is open to only a chosen few a door that leads to your backyard sometimes it hides all that is not to show the virtual walls that are unseen but exist and can always be felt they have windows of varied sizes that change with every person you face the virtual walls that are unseen but exist and can always be felt they have windows of varied sizes that change with every person you face the virtual doors are there too and yes they are open only for a chosen few the walls where you say you write your thoughts and who knows whether they are true or false the virtual doors are there too and yes they too are open only for a chosen few the walls where you say you write your thoughts and who knows whether they are true or false but best are some walls that are not walls but flimsy veils that try to hide and are still waiting to lay it all bare but best are some walls that are not walls but flimsy veils that try to hide and are still waiting to lay it all bare thank you thank you maitri that was a wonderful poem thank you silam that was very nice even thank the heron yes, if you see a heron on a tree your day is made but this is super thank you thank you thank you bankuri very good use of symbols and how you move the door from the door to the veil yeah <laughs> actually uh, you know there is a story like about uh, this poem and uh, in hyderabad there is a lady uh, who has a lady with a veil very fine veil a sculpture uh, so that she uh, was an inspiration behind this poem. wonderful 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 yeah because the uh, notion of doors and windows and what spaces are available to us or we make available to ourselves and what we hide from ourselves and others you know that that um, that allows us to really create our life and to move forward so i think that that's what i saw it that what a window or a door can hold for us that is lovely thank you thank you and that the right to so, privacy is really basic right so yes yeah and it is uh, often infringed upon actually Yes. So moving ahead, friends. Sometimes you just need a little space where uh, you can just be what you want to be, isn't it? 
away from the dictums of society, away from those peeping glances, away from the whispering neighborhood. Let's hear Anita as she renders her poem, Babylon, My Sinful Dance Muse. Anita. Thank you. Thank you, Neelam. So I write a lot of prose poetry these days, and a lot of my poetry is surrealist. But within surrealism, there is realism. And uh, once again, like my first book, a lot of questioning into the way society uh, puts you into specific blocks rather than letting you breathe and be free. So it's called Babylon, My Sinful Dance Meals. I found it one day searching for a place to learn line dancing in Northern Virginia suburbs, just a footstep away from my beloved Washington, D.C. I did more than learn. I danced, I loved, I lost, I pined, felt it all. My sinful dance muse Babylon, where I could get let go with no one to judge me except me. A glass of champagne or two serenaded along with many men who wanted to know where I was from, accentuating in baritone, you are, ex you are so exotic, while shaking hands with their middle finger caressing my palm just so swiftly, innocuously. Came to know later that they were testing if I, were, if I was up for a one night stand. No man, go find another loser. The club grew on me as did its men. Women there remorsefully became mostly sisters of convenience. My sinful love, Babylon, with low lights, hookah and cigars, Go-go bands, DJ and club music, food and spirits plenty. And the dance floor was like my bed that I could make love on with the man of my fantasies without any desi pointing a finger. Hey you, have you gone mad? A woman with a grown-up son dancing in mini dresses late at night, drinking booze in those cheesy American clubs instead of prostrating before Hindu gods praying for peaceful old age. Babylon, thank you for being my sinful dance muse. Amazing. Amazing. Thank Wonderful. you Thank you so much. Meet the rhythm. I don't dance. I have to confess, you know, I, I don't dance. <laughs> dance and just sway to the music, but I loved this and I loved the hookah and I love the shots as well. But I mean, <laughs> and I love to dance, so I, uh, I'll dance with you the next time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, moving ahead, I suppose all poets are somehow tired of being judged, of being commanded and demanded from, or being misunderstood, isn't it? Then, where do they find their solace? Let's hear Driftwood Ashore or Sham Sundar Sharma as he talks about this theme. Uh, you muted yourself. Please unmute. <laughs> okay, now. <laughs> now do not we can measure hear. me. Do not measure me in yards or meters. Not in furlongs either. Do not plumb my depth, depth by scratching my skin. I do not bleed to such overtures. Do not toss a stone in my puddle. It is forever muddled. Do not judge me. I do not know if my life was a sentence or if this is a parole. I am the mule well accustomed to being flogged. It matters little if my silence is misconstrued, my inaction misunderstood. Perhaps you do not know, driftwood does not resist. It just drifts onto infinity. Wonderful, Very wonderful. Nice. That, wonderful. I especially love the last uh, two lines. Driftwood just, yes. I just yes. love that. <laughs> it is wonderful. We really are falling in love with that metaphor of the driftwood now. <laughs> Very nice. 
there is a line in there which is very beautiful also i just will quickly finish uh, my skin doesn't bleed to such scratches right uh, and yeah. it's such a powerful one you know it's it's beautiful lovely statement thank, of you. thank you so moving forward have you ever wondered how many angles there can be to the same object i am reminded of the poem the elephant and the four blind men each interpreting the elephant as they wished then what's the truth are we really blind let's hear pankuri as she reads out her next poem pankuri thank you so much uh, thank you for that uh, you know talk about the elephant so this one doesn't uh, really use that imagery so much but yes it is about looking at things in different ways and it is this one is about alliances and political alliances the kind of alliances even a voter makes with its with his or her political uh, you know party she votes for coming back to the alliance statement coming back to the alliance statement after such robbery of rights let me today uh, has been a day where you know in the uk a police officer has uh, confessed to the murder of a teacher sarah ivans i think her name was so let me dedicate yeah, yeah. to her and also uh, you know we can't forget george floyd so uh, this is a very very uh, kind of uh, resistance poetry come back back to the alliance statement of the such robbery of rights in broad daylight the robbery of credit merit opportunity the great big thrill of doing it yourself the thrill that in the modern day has been solely accepted as the individuals stolen brutally in the making of an unnecessary alliance consisting of merit social forces nationality all kinds of identities even the question of an ongoing affair an extra marital affair made into a central issue and put forth at the center preventing work preventing progress but primarily an alliance made up of a proximity between work and family most undesirable never permitted an alliance that has still eluded still out faced you still resisted being busted like a drug trafficking racket wearing the mask of righteousness beautiful beautiful very nice very nicely said as i said poetry is the lens of the society so this proves it <laughs> thank you thank you so much thank you so uh... moving on uh, i welcome neelam to render her second poem her second po poem is your loving embrace this uh, poem is beautiful in the sense that uh, we always talk about the youthful love between radha and krishna but this presents a different angle and i'm sure you are going to enjoy it a lot so neelam over to you thank you so much maitri friends it is said that when radha had filled or uh, fulfilled all her worldly duties she developed a keen desire to meet krishna before she bid adieu to the earth this poem is regarding her acute keenness to meet her heart throb your loving embrace o oh krishna i am an old woman today free from all household responsibilities and time has come to bid adieu to this beautiful earth o oh krishna the people may have forgotten the divine love that we shared but how can i forget how can you forget i'm sure that my memories are still deeply embedded in the corners of your heart as you are hidden in my bosom o oh krishna i yearn to come and meet you once just once before i die but how will i come at what name shall i give to the relationship that we once shared you are a well known king what if the palace guards don't even let me in 
What if I am recognized by others and thrown away? What if you don't recognize my physical form now that I am an old and I am not so beautiful now? You won't recognize me. Impossible. There is a divine connection between you and me. Leaving my abode, I, a frail woman called Radha, will cross the mountains, the woods and the rivers to die in your loving embrace. So that was my poem. The so loving. beautiful. It is so emotional. So nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very so nice. it, it was a very most of yeah. the age. Uh, people will stop loving you. And age is a big thing for women, much more than it is for men. Sorry, Sham, the only man in the panel. But, <laughs> but when women start aging, if their age is more uh, objectified. And then when a man starts aging, it's more considered dignified and respectful and elegant. So, so I really like that poem because here Radha is telling Krishna. And the eternal connection, he says, cannot be missed. So, yeah, <laughs> that's good. Thank you. Thank you so much. The entire evening has seen so many beautiful poems being rendered by all the wonderful poets here. And I'm really thankful to all of you. If you wish to say some uh, concluding remarks, you're welcome. I thoroughly enjoyed all the poems. All of them were amazing. Uh, different aspects of different sentiments. It was a really enriching experience. Thank you so much, all of you. Yeah, I agree with Maitri. Uh, I think what I'm amazed about, especially on Facebook, as more and more poets became my friends, that so many people in the world are writing, number one. We don't know about them. And number two, they are writing so beautifully. And as Maitri said, it could be the same thing you know, as Sham said on inanimate objects. So many of us write on inanimate objects. So many write on scriptures like Neelam and I did. So it's, it's, it's the, it could be the same emotions, same thoughts, same things. But the diversity in the poetry and the poetic expression is absolutely, I am just spellbound. with so much talent in the world. And I saw it in all of you here. So... I'm just happy I shared this session with you and listened to all of you. So thank you. Thank you, thank you friends, thank you for, for participating. Uh, yes, Dutrut, you, uh, you were saying something. Thank you so much uh, for pulling me out of my shell. I normally am quite reclusive from poetry events and other events. <laughs> and, uh, I know, I know. Really happy That's that why I, I did it too. That's why I did I'm very really happy that I joined and it was wonderful listening to all of you. Uh, beautiful poems by everyone. Thank you. Yes. I hope you will join again and again, Shamji. I hope yeah, you will join should. again and again. I should. Yes, I wanted to say the same thing uh, and say thank you. Big thanks to Neelam Dee and absolutely gorgeous poems that I got to hear. And I'm so honored to read with you guys. It was a fun experience. And... Uh, uh, I just wanted to say something about that Radha poem as well. Very feminist, very nice, and uh, very good. So thank you again. All the poems are very nice. Wonderful. It's such a nice feeling to be out there reading and interacting with friends. That is, I thank think, you. the best part. That is the best part. You know, Absolutely. somebody asked me once, what's the best thing that you've achieved after uh, you started writing? I said, I've made wonderful friends. And I think that's the best achievement. <laughs> Otherwise, we would all be in our shells. Shells is something uh, Maitri's uh, poetry collection is called. <laughs> but uh, yeah, otherwise, definitely. we would all be, yeah. Shell. Otherwise, we would all be in our shells. So it's very good coming out of it and connecting to such amazing poets today. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we had wonderful uh, viewers today, Sarita Tripathi, Pragya, Seema Jain, Shobha Saxena Bhuaji, who happens to be my relative. And so many people uh, have been with us throughout the session. I've highlighted a few comments. So thank you, viewers. And thanks to Prasoon for making the wonderful poster. Thank you all.
गुड नाइट नमस्ते थैंक यू बाय बाय